Hey guys, I'm gonna take this piece of 5160 steel and turn it into my first ever buoy using the online takedown buoy knife course. That's how I'm gonna learn how to do this. Let's go do it. Yeah, just got done forging out my knife. Check it out. I put a blue blue wrap on there. Nice blue wrap to go with that gray. And I have not enough time left over to make a sheath. It fits like a glove. Okay, I was just kidding. Take this off of here. Blah, blah, blah. Forward, editing, lots of editing. There it is. All right, we're getting ready to forge this tang down. I'm gonna come back here about an inch off my plunge grind and we're gonna smash the rest of this metal out and we're gonna make it look like that. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Can you please explain what we just experienced? You just witnessed the Pagan Dawes effect. Probably more like the blue bunny. How do you get a little price? I'm going to clean up some of the mill scale per the course so I can get a closer look at the actual blade itself. Make sure I don't have any low spots and make sure this is looking pretty straight. It's got a little bit of a, a crown over here and a gentle belly over here. I got some bad marks in here. So I'm gonna put some of this material, I'm gonna push it to the other side over here. So I got something more to work with. got done forging out my blade. It's uh, straightened out. I got everything moved around where I want it. it. Just came in for a coffee break. I got my knife on its first heat treat cycle. I'm using the heat treat chart off the course. 
I did 1600, now I'm going to do 1500 next and 1400 after that. The plate's cooling down at 1500 degrees and I'm warming up about 100 and some degrees. So uh, I told Dad that I bet it was 100, under 100 degrees his coffee. That said it was, what'd you say, 100 degrees? I said it's over 100. You said it's over 100, so I guess we'll find out. Whoa! Whoa! That's some hot coffee. That's some hot coffee. One, probably 145. I didn't know it was going to be that hot. It's a hot coffee. It's hot coffee, man. Just got done normalizing the blade. It's very relaxed, just like I'm going to be after lunch today. And then we're going to put our template across here and take the Sharpie and mark around everything and remove everything down to the Sharpie. Make it look like a buoy. Just like this ground and it's ready to be heat treated. Last time I was forging, I wanted to move this metal from this side over to this side because it had a little belly in it. Well, you can see how I didn't move enough metal yet. This blade may not make it. After you do the heat treat and the plunge grind, then I'll know if this is gonna make it right through here. Got done crunching. I'm gonna make sure she got hard. Very good. Yeah, I just hardened it at 1525 and quenched it in Perks 50 and file tested it, and the file's barely digging on it. So now we're going to temper it for 15 or so for about a couple hours. Two hours later. All right, just got done heat treating this to 425. I've got some uh, hammer marks in here. I'm not sure if they're going to make it out before I grind too far into the knife. It, the might, knife may not make it. So I'm going to go over to the belt sander right now and see if I can get these marks smoothed out and the knife's going to be okay. Just got done. What did I do? Oh, yeah. Um, I convexed my edge on the slack belt over in the belt sander with a 120 grit. And now we're getting ready to sharpen it on the India stone. Okay, we're over here at the wet stone. It is an oil stone. This side is very coarse, about a 180 grit maybe. And this side is fine side. We're going to fine tune it on this side. It's maybe about a 320 grit. I don't know, somewhere in there. Just got done sharpening the knife. Now we're going to do some performance testing. Ooh, need a little follow through. Just got done sharpening the knife. Now we're doing a little performance testing. Ah. Yeah. It's got. It's got innards. Let's go to the two by four. We're going to continue the performance test by chopping through this two by four twice. Got some knots in there too. We're going to see if the edge rolls over or if it chips. Oh. 
Oh. Well, it chipped when I hit the, it chipped when I hit that. The vice. Cut the vice. It will kill. Sharp. <laughs> oh, there was a big chip in it there where I hit that that uh, indigenous ironwood. It feels like the burrs stood up good. The hardness feels good. We'll see if it shaves. Still shaves right where I hammered on it really hard. It shaves as good as it did when I started, actually. All right, let's do it again. Should I? We're gonna strope it to straighten it back up perfectly where it was at. And we're gonna cut paper again. It will keep by cut by then. Uh, we chopped to a two by four and didn't roll the edge. Chipped it where I hit the steel and the anvil. Uh, no other uh, cracks or fractures in it. Really smooth and creamy. And now we're gonna run across a brass rod and see if it flexes over the rod. I'm uh, running this blade edge hard over this uh, brass rod because when you run it over the brass rod, it's gonna be like a speed bump and it needs to bend back down. It needs to spring up and go back down. If it stays up, it's too soft. And it's not, it's, it's flowing over the brass rod and going right back down to where it goes. I don't hear anything, I don't feel anything. It's just smooth and creamy going right up and over. We just got done with the performance test and we're going to work on the Ricasso and, and uh, maybe even get close to fitting that handle and some guard material on the tang. That's all we got for now. May the forge be with you. What did you learn the most from the past week? Oh my goodness, it's gonna have to be the forging. I had some challenges with my heel and I kept going over the video and saw how Kyle was moving steel. So how did the online course help you overcome that complication of forging out a blade? If there's something I didn't get when I was in the thick of it, the forge is running, uh, my hammer's all warmed up, the anvil's warmed up, and there's something I would just, I didn't get, I could go back and look at the video right now and take a, just a quick uh, reflection back on it, on the course. I could get it figured out right away. I could see how exactly how Kyle did it. So a couple of your blades failed, uh, three of them, I think. Yeah. Would that have changed if you never watched the course? Would you have just gone with the first one? The Yeah, I probably would have. Uh, but because it's a course and because there's a teacher and because there's other students, it forced me to fixate on stain to print. The, the proper height, the proper thickness, the proper this, proper that. I didn't want to compromise. I didn't want to take any shortcuts. So I, I did the hard thing and scrapped the knife set off the side. It'll still make a nice knife, but it's not the coarse knife. So I tried to up it and keep it exactly the way I first started out. Just It just pushed me hard. The course pushed me extra hard to keep up with the Master Bladesmith teaching it and everybody else out there on the pommel nuts that's putting this thing together. Let me show you how easy it is. If you got the forge running, you got stuff fired up, and you want to see what's going on, you can't, you can't remember exactly how. So there's an app right there. I click the app. Um, I'm on my menu right now. I got all these selections, hours and hours of selections here. So if I'm in the middle of my forging, I'll go to my uh, forging the blade. I'll boink it up. I'll turn my thing over here sideways. I'll bring up my, I'll bring my screen up. I can get it a full size screen. I can pause it. I can go back. I get all kinds of stuff. I can go through here and I, I pause it and then I go through slowly and it'll take me exactly where I want to see. There he's working on the, uh, working on putting that uh, plunge in right there, grinding out that plunge, hammering that plunge in. And I just play it and he's just talking about it. I hear, it, I got an earbud in, 
I got an earbud in, so I'm listening to it right now. I got uh, Kyle right in my head. He's right in my head. So I'm listening to him and nobody else knows it. I'm just here going back over stuff again.